John Carter of Mars is a role-playing game by Modifius Entertainment. It is based on the novels written by the American Edgar Rice Burroughs between 1912 and into the 1940s. Modifius worked with the Burroughs estate to ensure a fully faithful rendition of the details of the Barsoom universe. The rest of the content of this book is made up of the so-called 2D20 system, which Modifius has used in a couple of its other RPGs. This game was originally funded through Kickstarter and offered up some outrageous higher tier rewards for their backers. I am only reviewing the core rulebook in this video. Adventures in John Carter of Mars take place on an alternate reality version of Mars called Barsoom. The original novels were written as pulp action romance in their day, where the good guys fought the bad guys and the hero defeated tyranny at the end of the story in bold fashion. What makes this actually interesting is that Burroughs wrote 11 novels in this world and meticulously built a planet filled with not only one or two kinds of Martians, but almost half a dozen, each with their own culture, history, prejudices, economy, and legend. Due to the fact that the game's creators worked with the Burroughs estate on this project, you can expect that every detail of the setting is going to be accurate. For example, there is an eye-popping amount of detail put into describing the equipment and vehicles of Barsoom. It's a lot to take in. For GMs who just need the basics to get started, some of these text walls are brain melting. But for those who want maximum granularity, you'll get it. The same goes for virtually everything else about Barsoom in this book. The history is presented in three eras all based on the phases of influence by earthling John Carter himself. You'll also get a rundown on the biology, naming conventions, clothing, food, religion, social customs, entertainment, crime, technology, architecture, and resources of Barsoom. Then there are the main races. You have the Green Martians, which are fierce four-armed warriors who stand 15 feet tall. The details of these Martians goes on for pages, organized more into an anthropological framework than one for a GM trying to run a game. You have the Red Martians, which like the Green Martians are divided into separate kingdoms. Unlike the more primitive Green Hordes, the Red Martians fly airships and have a more complex system of honor and civilization. They are generally split between different city-states and kingdoms across the planet, and every single one of them is lovingly described in the book. Then there are the near-mythical Yellow Martians, the nefarious White Martians, the dominant Black Martians, and last but not least, Earthborn. In the canon, humans from Earth, or Jasum, travel to Mars as a sort of facsimile, wherein a copy of one's body is left back on Earth in stasis. The 2012 Disney movie does a decent job of depicting this phenomenon. If you play an Earthborn in this game, you are generally expected to be someone from the Civil War or Reconstruction era of the United States, but can obviously deviate and be whoever provides the most fun and entertainment for the story. The book goes into the beasts of Marsoon, detailing 16 main types. For whatever reason, half or more of the beasts are not illustrated, even though the reader could use some visual aids on some of them, they are otherwise all well described. When you get to starting a game of John Carter of Mars, you choose a general concept, then your race, then you choose an archetype. The book offers a great scope to choose from. Each comes with some core attribute bonuses, a starting talent, and an explanation of what you probably know and don't know about the world. You have six attributes in John Carter of Mars. Daring, Cunning, Empathy, Might, Passion, and Reason. They each range from 4 to 12. When you are checking against an obstacle or challenge, you are testing against a target number, wherein you are trying to roll equal to or under that number. To derive that number, you combine any of two attributes which most fit the situation at hand. So for example, if your character is trying to withstand the cold of the polar north, that would be a daring plus might test. If your daring score is 7 and your might score is 4, you add those up to 11, and then you roll 2 d20s. If your individual rolls are each under the target number of 11, that counts as one success each. And if any of those roles are under the character's weakest attribute in play, that counts as another success. Thus, if you rolled a 2 and a 9, that's two successes for each getting in at or under 11, 
as well as a third success for that 2 being under your weakest score of 4. This is, in essence, the 2D20 system. It uses D20s in a dual attribute test with a roll under paradigm for success. Most situations call for one success, sometimes two. The most epic of tasks will call for five successes in a single check. To assess damage taken or given, as well as other special effects, you roll one or more D6s, or combat dice. You can also have talents that range from grade 1 to grade 4 and even higher, and these can affect all kinds of mechanics. For instance, they can add to the number of dice you get to roll for a specific check. 5 is the maximum number of d20s you ever get to roll on a single check. The book offers about 24 basic talents in the main section, and then a handful more later in the book, but it also gives you guidelines on how to create your own custom talents. There is a very important game mechanic in the 2d20 system called momentum. Every PC has a number of momentum points. These are primarily earned by rolling extra successes on an attribute check. So, if a task requires one success and you roll three successes, you get two momentum points to spend right away or save for later. Momentum points can be spent in a bunch of different ways. You can spend a point to add a d20 to a roll, or spend them in narrative scenes to add advantages, etc. The book lists some suggested ways to spend, but you can negotiate with the GM on other creative ways to spend these points. In each round, a character has a conflict action, a movement action, free actions, and spoken actions. These can be expanded per turn with talents or limited with complications. You can take three types of damage, confusion, fear, or injury. You sustain certain types of damage depending on which attributes you used to defend against that damage. Your maximum capacity for each type of damage is determined by the highest value of either of the related attributes. When you accumulate enough of any of these damage types, you start suffering rolls for those related attributes. When you max out, you will either black out, flee, or otherwise become incapacitated. The book has a massive section on how to run a game of John Carter. Just like with a lot of these kinds of sections, there are some real gems of wisdom, as well as a lot of rehashed information that you've probably read or seen somewhere else, or perhaps derived out of experience or common sense. The Champions of Barsoom and the NPC Archetype sections are a fascinating collection of NPCs adapted from the novel. There are 28 in all, and each come with basic stats, some talents, and background info. Slightly more concise are the generic NPC descriptions, who each get core stats, a talent, and a couple of paragraphs of description. Here you can find a breakdown for the following kinds of NPCs. Finally, there is a full sample adventure with four detailed episodes to run right out of the book. Then, right at the end of the book, the authors throw out nine one-page adventure seeds to send you on your way. A read-through of these adventures highlights the charm of this game, which is that it is meant to tell a swashbuckling tale of pulpy science fiction adventure on an alien planet, where life and death and intrigue are all constantly swirling around the players. I have become more and more accustomed to shorter and more concise RPG publications as time goes on, so reading a game like John Carter of Mars is a bit daunting, but in defense of this book, it was meant to be a proper and full treatment of 11 novels worth of source material, sanctioned by the author's estate. And the fact is, the book contains so much backstory material for Barsoom, that this single book serves as a core rulebook plus one or two supplements. If this is a world you'd like to visit, the links are below. Thanks for watching, fellow Jasumians. This is Dave, signing off. See ya!